Hi everyone, so today we are going to be doing the fifth challenge of the Android application exploitation series of Cyber Hackathon. Uh, these were the challenges from the second round and you can find the initial round challenges on the channel as well. So um, this was an uh, advanced level challenge with over 400 points and um, you know you had to discover all the flags from the native library. Sorry for the spoiler over here. So, I think we should, you know, just get started first. Just take a look at the description. We need to find user credentials and some other sensitive data exposed by the provided application, which can lead to an attacker gaining access to otherwise restricted functionality. So let's get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is install this application into Genymotion, and we have the application there. And the second thing I'm going to do is analyze the application statically, and you know, just um, get an image of what we have to do. So as always, we are just going to take a look that whenever the application is opened, uh, the main activity from this class is being pulled. So uh, here we have it from this package. So um, um, if you have seen the video cycle data solution, right? This one is uh, exactly same to that, you know, with just some difference in the native library, nothing much. So um, you can see that you know, uh, just like that. Uh, if you haven't seen that, just, you know, uh, watch that quickly and then you can maybe continue this or just, you know, watch this one. So um, uh, as we know that whenever the native keyword is being used, that means that this function is being called from the native li library, right? It's not being called, um, uh, you know, um, from the Java code somewhere, right? So it's being referenced from the native library, which is also, you know, packaged with the application itself. So um, uh, there are different, uh, these libraries are uh, compiled from for cross platform compatibility. So, so yeah. So um, let's just take a look at the logic here. So the UI has a username field, password, flag, and login button. Okay, and when the button is pressed, I guess. Um, okay, so when the button is pressed, this method gets pulled. and it checks if the length of username and password is zero or whatever you enter that right. If, in display training and if it isn't it is going to call username added to text uh, it is going to fetch you know uh, whatever we add in username and password field and store them in these variables and then it is going to fetch the original username and password from the um, from the native library you can see that you know native strength so these these two methods are going to fetch the username and password and it is going to store that into these variables so it is storing that even before uh, it is doing the comparison, right? So that means we can uh, maybe uh, hook these methods and we can, you know, take a look at it. So um, as you can see, and then it is, you know, going to basic 4 decode that thrice, three times. Uh, I think the string would be encoded three times, right? And then it is going to, you know, compare those. And if they do compare, it is going to call these methods and it is going to, um, it is going to concatenate all those methods and, oh, all those methods return some hex data, which is then going to be converted from hex to string, and that would be our flag. So um, uh, I'm going to show you something cool. There is this library, um, some guy at Square told me, uh, you know, you can use to hook um, the native methods and see whatever they are returning using um, Frida. And uh, so it goes like GNI trace. I'm not sure if it was, oh, yeah. so I've already told it. So you can, I think it scores both by Python 2 and 3 and the help looks something like this so we're going to use that so uh, before going to do that we are you know just going to um, get the source and from there we are going to get the dot um, so file or the native library as well so we can go inside the folder resources lib x86 and then we can call gni trace so it takes uh, in the dash l you type the library name and then you give it the package name, right? So we can find that with QDB shell ps. And I know that it has the keyword JNI in it. Uh, I think the application is not open. Maybe that's why we can grab it. So this is how the UI looks. And if we try and do that, there we go. So now I'm going to uh, hook these. Uh, I'm going to see whatever they are going to return. Uh, this uh, method, username and password, right? Because it is being called even before the comparison uh, begins. So, okay, so we have to turn on Frida before that. There we go. So uh, you have to, you know, install Frida server, not install, just keep the binary uh, in your Jenny motion. Uh, and it is, you know, calling that binary. 
and now feta server is started uh, in our Jenny machine emulator and now it can communicate with it so it has started listening so if we try and you know enter something in here ASTZXE and you can see that you know it cooked those methods and it saw whatever they are returning so uh, as we discussed these are base64 encoded strings and we are going to decode them so let's do that D. Um, sorry about that. Basic for uh, So as we remember, these are encoded three times, and there we go. So this is the password string. We can enter that over here, and then we have the username string over here. And then we are going to again call it three times. And the username is well done. So let's try that. And there we go, we got the second flag. So um, this only gives us one of the flags, right? So we have to fetch like three flags of this challenge. There's a this to you know complete the format. If you submit it without it, it won't accept it. So um, so we can see that there's nothing else in here being done right uh, maybe if we take a look over here we can see that you know it is concatenating first third and fifth right it's skipping the second and fourth library uh, why is that even though it is refer referencing that from the native library so in this case now we have to analyze the native uh, library and see the functions inside it so for that we can use Ghidra. Uh, you know it is really simple uh, it will be really simple to look at it I'm going to create folder in here, get you know, just for the project and you know I want share it and I'm going to name it viewer JI finish and now I'm going to import the SO file the let me see if I can you know just add it using FM so we don't we don't need this anymore right you can just close that uh, actually let's see what how good it gave out oh so it, it did give us, you know, those strings, uh, the base, uh, the hex encoded string, right? So which was then decoded in the code. So yeah, you can actually uh, come get in these if you want to. Um, the thing I was going to try was to try and import this directly here. Is that possible? I think it is. That's cool. So I don't have to, you know, find the file from there. So now, you know, just double click over here and it'll open it and yes we want to analyze it it is going to take some time to decompile the functions but uh, as we know from the cycle video that um, you know all the methods have the name of the uh, package and then the methods right so if you come over here you can see that java com example we were jni main activity and from main activity we have all these methods which were being called in there right so um as we remember that um the second and the fourth and some other ones weren't being referenced from uh you know um from they weren't being called anywhere but they were declared on the top of the code right here right so uh, that is uh, one thing and second thing which you always want to look into a native library is what are the additional methods which are not being called here but do exist in the native library and why are they there uh, maybe the developer just added it from development purposes and you know just forgot to remove it uh, maybe it was not supposed to go into production and was supposed to be stripped uh, in the staging environment But you were about to do that. So let's see if there is any method which uh, isn't actually in the JEDX source But is here. So if you take a look at here There is this method string from JNI flag which is not present in the code itself And this was actually the same from for the cycle APK um, And we can see that you know it contains a hex encoded string. Let's just copy that and I am going to Echo that, just p dash r, and there we go. We got the third flag, right? And I'm going to write that over. And then for the first flag, um, you know, if if we go back here, you can you know access the data, and which is uh, actually you know showing it here. But um, you know, I I wasted some time here. I looked everywhere, but I wasn't able to find it. But if you just come back into the JNF flag function or method, uh, whatever you call it you can see that it has the first flag over here, right? So, you know, always look through your code. Uh, the second time I was doing it, I, you know, just found it right there. 
So you know you can just concatenate that, and you will have your um, first flag. And it will be from here to here. And there we go. You know, just add this curly braces, and we have all the third flags, third, uh, all the three flags. So now uh, we are going to also try and do it in a simple method, which is you know not too much complex. For that, we are just going to use strings, right? Just plain strings, and we're going to grab for EDS. And you can see that you know we get the flag which was already there, it wasn't encoding or anything. So we can just run strings, you know, just going to keep an eye out. And you can see that you know this is the string, uh, the second part of that string. And if we go a little bit up, we can find the first part over here, right? Let me try and make it a little bit beautiful. I think we can do that with MATLAB syntax. Does it look good? Sharp. I think this is fine, right? Okay. So, you know, this is, helps us in uh, syntax highlighting this. So, it makes it kind of easy to find the flag. Um, so, this is the second part. And this is the first part of that. And you can see that there are hex strings over here which uh, might belong to that um, the flag uh, I think it was the second flag right so uh, it, uh, these might belong to that and you can see that you know here we have a big string which might be the third flag and the bigger right so this uh, is a really easy way if you do not want to go the Kidra path if let's say nothing is obfuscated and uh, it is pretty simple you can just use strings and grab the flag right uh, for these ones uh, and if you also don't want to you know instrument it if you do not want to hook anything and you want to just see um, Simply what is happening you can you know um, just come in here and concatenate these strings uh, You might not have much luck concatenating these in sequence in the right sequence But um, you know it might work out for you uh, at least for two flags if you want to just you know do it quickly so yeah, uh, this is how we were able to fetch all three flags from this and there's another method using objection you can you know hook these methods um the the username and password you know you can just hook these and then you can see whatever um, they are returning right so just like in jni trace you can use objection which also is a wrapper around frida uh, so you know it'll, it'll make it easy but jni tracer is only for um, the native libraries while objection allows you to work with everything almost everything uh, as far as i've seen so yeah, that is it. Um, see you in the next one. And I think that would be the last video of our Lahore applications. And then we'll uh, move on to Karachi applications. So yeah, thank you for watching.